I have a company called Think10 Media Group, which is all dedicated to uh, basically using film and media to advocate for social change. Um, however, <laughs> even though that's where I'm at now, that's not always how it was. Um, I'll give you a little bit of backstory in terms of um, my involvement in the film industry. So I had moved out to California back in uh, 2004 to pursue filmmaking. And um, at that time, I truthfully wasn't really um, socially engaged. I was just really concerned about you know, coming to LA, being a, a great up and coming director, making really cool movies, and, and that was basically it. Um, I made a series of short films that had absolutely nothing to do um, with social change or anything. They were just purely entertainment. Um, and then I took a, um, a really big um, risk and I decided to make my first feature length film in Los Angeles. Uh, this was a, a film called The Hiding that was actually, um, it was shot in 2007 and eventually released in 2009. Um, and this was a film that I put so much work into. Um, any of you that have ever made a film or um, anything that's collaborative, that you work over a period of time, you know that it takes A, a lot of time, B, a lot of people and resources. And this was a uh, psychological thriller that I thought was like, oh, this is a, this is a great, um, you know, really mind-boggling movie, kind of like a modern day The Shining. Now I can look back and, and it really doesn't serve much purpose other than maybe at best um, entertaining a few of the people that watch it, you know? Um, and so when I look back, I'm like, wow, I spent two years of my life, I literally went bankrupt. And at the end of the day, I had an 80 minute psychological thriller that truthfully wasn't very good, right? Um, now we were fortunate enough to get distribution. I use the term fortunate very loosely, um, because we did get distribution. However, to this day, I have not seen a penny from this film. So that, that whole experience allowed me to kind of you know, step back and say, OK, hold on a second. Um, filmmaking, whether it's a short film, feature film, uh, a documentary, whatever it may be, it takes so much to make that final so product. I realized that you know, with what I'm doing, if I'm going to put that much time and energy, it has to go beyond entertainment. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with entertainment because I, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, <laughs> right? Um, my, my job is to actually entertain. Um, a few years ago, there was a $500 million production that came out, $500 million to create this film. Who knows how much money was put into marketing? And at the end of the day, when I left the theater, it was like, oh, that looked cool. And I'm like, wait, $500 million? And all it did for me as an audience was, oh, it looked cool? Just personally, I started getting more... Um, I wouldn't say engaged, but um, more informed. You know, um, I just started to take more interest in, in my community and in my world around me, um, actually reading the news, not just going on Twitter or Facebook, um, and starting to really see, like, you know, there's <laughs> a lot of injustices in this world. There's a lot of really beautiful and great things in this world as well, but there's a lot of injustices. You have to be the change you want to see. You know, that, that's a, a line from Gandhi. You have to be the change you want to see in the world. Um, and that's something that I totally embodied and realized that we all want to see change, but it's really, it's not up to anybody out there, it's up to us. It's up to each and every one of us to do our part. Now, I happen to do that through filmmaking. Um, and so that's why I created this company called Think10 Media Group. Um, now, the trick that comes with what we're doing is we're trying to advocate for change. So we have a, our, our film that's out now, it's called Smuggled, which, um, you know, people call it an immigration film, but it's really not. It's a film about a mother and, their, and her son that are being smuggled across the country. The story spends about 80% of the time in a compartment where they're being smuggled. And they're simply, it's just a relationship between a mother and son. That's really what the film is about. And so as an audience member, you're, you're able to, to see this experience, but then it's also in the context that, oh wait, they are being smuggled, you know? But it humanizes who these people are. You get an understanding, oh, they're people. So the, the thing that I realized with that approach is we had to put the entertainment first, you know, um, because for, for decades now, filmmakers have been using film to advocate, but a lot of times it's through documentaries. You know, let's say I had a documentary that was for, that was advocating for immigration reform. How many people that are against immigration reform are going to come pick up my documentary? How many people that are against immigration reform are going to come to a screening of a film that advocates for immigration reform? It's going to be very, very few. You know? So at the end of the day, you're kind of preaching to the choir at that approach. With Smuggled, I present it, and, and it truly is, as a quality independent film. It's a drama. It's an engaging story. It's, it's very character driven, very dialogue driven, and that's what it is. That's how I pitch it. Now, obviously, when you come there and you watch this film, it's everything that I just mentioned, 
But of course, it's rooted in uh, the reality of what our immigration system is. Right now, we're also working on a film that deals with solitary confinement, and it's a very similar approach. Um, we're not advocating one way or another, but we're just going to look at an inmate who has been in solitary confinement for multiple decades. Um, looking at the, the whole experience of when they first got to prison, throughout the whole time, all the major moments in their lives, um, through an entertaining and engaging way, but then you're also, you're going to be forced to realize like, oh wow, that's what goes on in, in solitary confinement. In order for any change to exist, it has to start with us. I do it through film and media because that's, that's my passion. That's what I love to do. I love to tell stories. It doesn't mean that everyone has to do it that way. Everyone can do it in their own way. But the, the bottom line is, and what I've learned a long time ago is, when you're, your time on here on this earth is very limited, we have to make it count. And I spent too many times looking back and saying, God, why did I do that? I wish I could have done it differently. I wish I didn't go bankrupt at the age of 27, <laughs> you know, but I did, I learned from that, and hopefully I can you know, share that, that knowledge that I have so other people don't make those same mistakes. Make every moment matter.